So a few nights ago, I was able to set up in my backyard, and as part of the setup routine that I do um, in PhD guiding when I'm getting all that set up, uh, you'd normally run the guiding assistant. It's located in the tools drop down. You just select the guiding assistant, and then uh, you'll select a guide star and start guiding. And uh, what it does is it watches that guide star for a couple of minutes, uh, at least two minutes is the recommendation. I let this run for about two and a half minutes. Um, it watches the guide star but it does not send any output at all to the mount. So all it's doing is watching the star, see if it moves north, south, east, west, and uh, how much, how fast it's moving. It can also see the high frequency star motion uh, to where if it's uh, poor seeing, you'll see a lot of star motion. And if it's very good seeing, it'll be very, very uh, still. Uh, it measures other things like the periodic error it can measure the, the drift of the mount. It shows you some of the, these numbers here. It also shows you your polar alignment error. Uh, currently, mine's at 0.5, but the longer it goes, it, uh, it drops down a little bit more. I think by the end of the night, or by the end of this run, it's about 0.1. Um, Andy Glasso, in, a, in one of his uh, conference talks, said that you can actually do between 5 and 10 arc minutes of polar alignment error. That's actually better for the mount, or better for guiding, rather. Um, and I was kind of surprised by that, but uh, that was the recommendation by him. Um, if you want to measure your backlash and declination, you just check that box. And then once the run is complete, it'll, uh, it'll measure the backlash. Okay, so we're coming up on about the two and a half minutes. Yeah, there it is at point one. Um, and I will just click the stop button. And what's going to happen next is it's going to uh, clear the uh, backlash. So all it's doing is nudging. So if you look at the little green box up there around the guide star, it's going to nudge the star north. So it's actually coming off of the crosshairs just a little bit. And now uh, it is actually now it's measuring the backlash. So it's moving north at 500 millisec milliseconds, uh, and it's going to do that 16 times. And you can just watch that star drift off to the north. And just kind of remember that starting point after the nudge, because once it comes back, it'll move the star south for the same number of steps. And uh, ideally, it should land right back where it started from. And then in a minute, we'll see a graph to where it'll show the, the mount movement as it moves north. And then if you see some sort of a plateau, that's the backlash. And then it'll see the mount movement as it comes back to the south. You obviously don't need to do this in RA since your RA motors are moving all the time. It's just uh, either going a little faster or a little slower to compensate for the periodic error of the mount. But declination, you can actually reverse either north and south. And since your deck motor isn't running normally, you can have some backlash. Okay, so that's step 16 of 16, and you see that it's back just to where we started right after that nudge. And then PhD guiding gives you some recommendations, uh, like this one says uh, one to three seconds. It says to improve the focus on my guide camera. I've heard that actually not, or having a very, very slightly defocused star is better. It kind of averages out that point. Um, here's my backlash graph. So the red line is what the mount is actually doing on the way south, and then you'll see that plateau, and then the red line coming back. The white line is ideal. That's where you want it to be. And as you can see, this backlash is very, very minor. So the, it says the backlash is small, no compensation needed. And I think the number was like 42, sec, uh, 42 milliseconds for the backlash. So I started the guiding and I'm just going to let this run for a minute or two and I cleared the graphs just so I can see, you know, just fresh uh, points on the graph so I can see what my guiding is doing. And uh, I normally get around uh, that uh, 0.35 pixels or half an arc second, 0.6 arc seconds in, uh, in guiding. So this is pretty average for me. 
and you can see that star profile moving around. The auto select feature and uh, now the uh, they moved it to where you don't have to use the drop down. It's just one of those little icons down at the bottom, which is really nice to have it there. If you're not using it, I really suggest that you use it. It does a really good job at, at choosing an unsaturated star. So while we have a second, just not my guiding setup. I have a 70 millimeter refractor, a dedicated guide scope at 500 millimeter focal length. And then I use a QHY5 L2 mono guide camera. Uh, pixel size is 3.75 microns. And uh, what that does is give me a, an imaging scale of about 1.55 arc seconds per pixel. So that's about it. I'm at, uh, looks like 0.57 arc seconds, 0.37 pixels. Uh, really good guiding, and uh, I'm going to call that good. So you guys take care, and uh, we'll see you next time.